Hi, so fun friends. I'm really happy to be with you here in hot July and talking about our color theme for the month, which is black and white. And I think I've got some fun projects to show you. So let's dive right in. The first one I want to talk to you about is this really fun embroidery disc that I found. And because black and white lends itself so well to Halloween, and July is the perfect time to do some off-season sewing so that you're all prepared for the spooky month and for fall. I did quite a few Halloween projects this month, and this is one that I found. It is a machine embroidery Halloween mug rugs, and it has four different designs, and they make up really, really cute. Here's one, it says trick or treat on it. Here's another one. That's cute. I like this little skeleton with Happy Halloween. And then what I did is I took one of the designs and stitched it up on a Kimberbell tote blank. Um, and I just think that turned out really, really cute. It says, it's a silhouette of a witch. It says a wee bit wicked. And I really like that. But the best part of this whole thing is I found five different colors for you guys of glow in the dark thread. So except for the black, all of the stitching on these is done with glow in the dark thread. And I just think that makes it even more fun for Halloween. So I think you guys will like this. Um, in the interest of full disclosure, um, most of the colors of glow in the dark thread glow white or pale green, except the orange, which glows a really bright orange. So I don't know what that glow in the dark technology is. Maybe that's, maybe it can't glow some of those other colors. I'm not sure, but that's what it is. But it's super, super fun. It glows really, really bright. And I did it on my regular embroidery machine and I didn't have to do anything special. I did use a Microtex embroidery needle with a bigger eye because the thread is a little bit thicker than embroidery thread. But other than that, nothing fancy and it sewed up just great with all that fun glow in the dark thread. So I think you guys are really gonna like that. Okay, the next project I wanna tell you about is Pocket Packers by Annie. And honestly, the folks at By Annie have got this down to a science. They really are so clever with all their different organizational patterns. And what's cool about this one is that they're flat and um, they have lots of different configurations of how you do the different zipper pockets. So you have lots of opportunities to customize, choices to make, and they fit beautifully inside a lot of the other By Annie bags. So if you already have some of the By Annie like organizational bags to take places, these fit inside of it. They fit inside of them very easily. So here's the one I made. It has two different handle styles. You can do this as a shorter handle. There's also an option for a longer handle so that you can throw it over your shoulder. On the back is a full mesh zipped pocket. And then the variation I did is to have three vinyl zippered pockets on the front. But there's lots of different variations. They even have an option where they teach you how if you want to divide one of these pockets, just pull two zipper pulls on this length of zipper and sew a divider in the pocket with one pull on each side and then that gives you a divided pocket on the bottom, which I thought was a really clever thing. But this went together really very quickly and I think it's gonna be super useful. And I had this fun black and white um, fabric in my resource center that has all different like sewing motifs on it and um, different like sewing sayings, like it says, my soul is fed by needle and thread, or keep calm and sew on, or I gather fabric, which don't we all gather fabric? And of course I have the white mesh for you guys and the Biani zipper by the yard, which gives you plenty of zippers to use to make this fun project. Okay, another fun way to use up 
uh, scraps of fabric in your resource center is this cute mini charm pillow trio. Now, I know that there have been several times that for the gift for So Fun, for attending So Fun, has been a little mini charm pack of little squares of fabric. So if you have some of those that are just sitting in your resource center looking pretty, this is a great way to use them up because one little mini charm pack will make all three of these pillows. There are three different designs and I chose to do them with some scraps of Halloween fabric. So there's this one. And this one. And as you can see, the designs are not complicated. They came together really quickly and easily. And this one, which I, I think this one might be my favorite. I like all the black, different black that I have going on in here. Um, this makes into a 16 inch pillow and I kind of like a poofy pillow. So I stuffed these with 18 inch feather pillow forms that I had. However, if you wanted to make a bigger pillow, cause these aren't giant, it would be super easy to just sew a border around these blocks. And then you could have, you know, an 18 inch pillow. Or if you do a little two inch border, you could have a 20 inch pillow, which is a great size. And I think that it would not detract from the pattern for these at all. This is a great way to use up scraps or to use up those mini charm packs that you guys have. And they went together quickly. Um, one change I made is it wanted you to have an envelope back and I prefer a zippered back. So I did my go-to zipper installation. We've talked about this installation method many, many times, but um, Anyone at the store can tell you how to do it if you don't remember how we did that. Okay, let's see. Next, let's talk about this fun book. It's called The Zipper Pouch Book by Zaka Workshop. And we've done a lot of stuff from Zaka over the years with So Fun because their designs are really cool. And you guys all know I love me a zippy pouch. Like, uh, give me all the zippy bags all the time. They are such satisfying projects to make because they're so quick. It's a great way to showcase fun fabrics. And it's really a fun little, they're useful. And it's a fun little thing to have on hand to give as a gift to somebody. Because who doesn't love to get a really pretty little zippy bag? Nobody. That's the answer. Nobody doesn't love that. So this is a fun book. It has a whole bunch of really unique shapes and styles of zippy pouches that I have not seen before. Um, the first one I made, they call it the little yo-yo pouch. And I did not make a yo-yo on it, but this is my version of that. And I had this fun, uh, basically black um, Mary Engelbrecht fabric in my resource center and I never used it for anything and I thought it really lends itself well to this. It has this little raw edge ruffle around the top and just made up really quickly and easily. And look at this fun zipper that has this pretty zipper pull because, and look at the inside. One of the fun things about this book is in the back, obviously I've already taken them out, but in the back the book comes with three zippers in it. So when you get the book, you get zippers too to get you started on the projects. And because this zipper had this really cute little pull, I did not make the yo-yo zipper pull to go on this bag. I thought this half moon pouch was really, really pretty. I really liked this boxy one as well. I thought that was such a unique shape and design. And I thought that was really pretty. Um, and I loved these little, uh, they call it a tetra pouch, and it reminds me of like a little pyramid or something. And I thought, how quick and fun and cute and easy would this be to make to hold all kinds of little tiny treasures? And it's a great way to use up little scraps of fabric you might have. Um, 
And how cute is that? And then the other one I made out of this book is this um, long skinny pencil pouch. It has a pull tab on each end and instead of doing these out of fabric, I just did them out of my tags that I use for everything. And this pretty zipper is one that came in the book. Um, and I just lined it with some colored pencil fabric that I had left over. But again, a great way to use up little scraps and I thought this is a useful size. And then because we're doing so much with zippers, you guys, I found some really fun zippers for you. These are brand new and they're from Sassafras Lane and they all have nickel coils, but they're nylon zippers, just like those really awesome Sally Tomato zippers we love that look like metal, but they're nylon. This has a black and white striped tape. This is a pink and white striped tape. And this is a navy and white striped tape. And there's so many fun things that you can do. And I also brought in for you guys a variety of nickel zipper pulls that you can add to these because the zipper does not come with zipper pulls. So we have some fun different zipper pulls for you guys to try. But I think that there's really something for everybody in the zipper pouch book. Okay, um, another embroidery project that I did is this uh, Suki Sews fun little zippy pouches and it's called the Spooky Spider Zippy Pouch and it's all made in the hoop. And so here are, it comes in a large and a smaller size. And I did the spider web in black, but the spider, I used the glow in the dark white. And then on the bottom and the very top edge of these, I used this OESD gl black glitter vinyl. And it was really easy to work with. It sewed up really, really great. And like all in the hoop projects, these just came together so quickly and I think they're super cute and what a great little gift these would make. So fun to have for Halloween time. Um, there's a couple different variations that you can do with these. You don't have to use vinyl, obviously. You can use whatever fabric you would like. Um, but the directions are really clear and easy to follow and like I said, they make up super fast and super cute. And this vinyl kind of puts them a little bit over the top. So I think you will like that. Let's talk about a couple of fun notions and little ideas that I have for you guys. Um, we found these really cute felt garland kits. And one is strictly Halloween. It has um, ghosts like made out of felt that you string on there. And this one is fall and it has these cute felt pumpkins. And this kit includes a big needle and the thread and the felt and everything you need to make this really quickly. It's a really satisfying, great little project because it's truly like about a 15 minute craft that you could do just while you're watching TV or listening to an audio book or something else. You can get it done really quickly and then you have something instantly done to make your house a little bit cuter in some corner. It would also be a great little craft to do with a kid because they could totally handle it. There's nothing difficult or tricky about them. But really, really cute, two different varieties, one for fall and one for Halloween. So I think you guys will like those too. Okay, um, a couple other cool things I have. I found this fun uh, wrap bracelet kit and it's um, got black and kind of like grayish sparkly beads in it and two different kinds of black cording and it comes with all the instructions to make this fun uh, wrap bracelet. So again, a different kind of needle and thread craft and something fun to sit and do. And I also think that this would totally be doable for a slightly older kid. I would guess probably anybody over like 10 could do this with a little bit of um, help from you. So this could be a really fun little project. 
Another fun gadget I have for you is the serger needle threader. So this cool little guy um, is super long, as you can tell, and on the end is a very long, skinny, flexible wire loop that will let you reach in and thread those serger needles that sometimes are really difficult to thread. I find myself using my hemostats to grab the thread and do it, but this I have found to be a lot easier and quicker to get those threads through. So if you serge, you might really need that. That would be a good little item to pick up. Another fun uh, and useful notion that I have for you is called the quilt binding spool. And of course I have this one that has black and gold and navy on clear in the acrylic. So that's kind of fitting with my theme. Um, you can't see, actually, maybe I can carefully open this and show you. Yes, I can. So it has a, two slots in it. And if you're using a two and a half inch binding or smaller, after you fold your binding in half and press it, it will fit perfectly in these two slots. And so you just thread it, the end of your binding, in one and then out the other with just a little bit hanging over. And then you can wind it on here and it keeps it from getting tangled um, and it keeps it nice and neat and together. And this spool will hold enough binding to bind a king size quilt. Um, and so I've been using this. I find it really, really useful. I find it useful when I'm sewing the binding onto the quilt because I can have this sitting next to my sewing machine and just turn it like this to unwind enough binding for the next section I'm sewing onto the quilt. Um, and it prevents it from being just like this big, loose, tangled mess in my lap as I'm doing it. So a small little item that kind of has had a big impact on um, keeping myself a little bit organized, making things just a little bit easier. And it's called the quilt binding spool. And then another cool thing that I have been using a lot that I brought in for you guys, this is a point press and pounding block. It has like a clapper on the bottom. And this is an ironing tool. It's very nicely finished. It's made all out of hardwood. And I have used this so much more than I even dreamed that I would use it. It has been super useful. Uh, when you are pressing out uh, cuffs or collars or anything that has a point corners of bags that you're making you just slide it over this arm and put the point in there and this is flat on the top and you can just get that right into the point and press your iron on there and press those seams out and you know that pressing makes your finished project look good you can tell a finished project where they have pressed each step of the way and where they have not. It just looks different. So this is really great for lots of long, skinny things. I have found it really useful for all kinds of bag making. Um, when I was using the Kimberbell tote blank to do that embroidery on that I showed you a few minutes ago, uh, after I sewed the side seams, I slid them onto here and lined up those side seams on this um, edge and pressed them nice and flat and it just worked beautifully. The wood heats up from your iron and so it um, presses that heat into the fabric and really makes a nice crisp seam. The bottom works like an ironing clapper. They call it a pounder also. And it's the same thing. You uh, press your seam open and then push this down onto any seam that you have pressed open. And the just the weight of this, you don't have to push really hard just for a few seconds, like 10 seconds or less. And it makes your seam so much crisper and lay so much flatter because the heat on the wood presses it into the fabric and it works really, really well. So this has been a great tool. I have used it so much. I use it all the time. Okay, let's talk about the Connie backpack. You know we love those Sally Tomato patterns, and this one is no exception. Um, it's called the Connie Backpack, 
and it comes in two different sizes and like all of her patterns they make up really really nice um, i will set this here so you can kind of look at the picture while i show you my version of this i found this fun canvas that was black that has all different kinds of light bulbs all over it um so this is the small size of the backpack so the big one is considerably bigger than this. And I thought this was the perfect size to be like an airplane bag to take, you know, as my like under the seat carry on. Really fits lots of things. It has carrying handles at the top or the straps for the backpack. On the sides, it has mesh pockets with fold over elastic on the side that will easily fit a water bottle. On the front, there's a little slip pocket at the top here for your ID or whatever you might need to put there. And then there's also a zipper pocket on the front that has a hidden flap here. Um, it uses soft and stable or some other kind of foam stabilizer and that helps it maintain its shape really, really nicely. On the inside is a mesh pocket that also has elastic at the top and it's a divided mesh pocket. And they use a really interesting method for sewing the lining in. It's not a drop-in lining and it doesn't have the raw edges that have binding on them. They use a totally different method. And I was finding it a little bit hard to figure out in the pattern directions how to do that, but on their website, they have a video tutorial that shows you every step of making this cute little bag. And um, I followed that along and had no problems putting the lining in, and it worked just great. Um, I have for you guys all the hardware, of course. Um, I have the black mesh and the black fold over elastic. I'm dropping things here. And then I also have the black zipper with gunmetal teeth and the cute gunmetal circle zipper pulls and the gunmetal ladder lock sliders for the backpack straps. So really everything you need except the fabric to make this bag I've got for you. And it was not overly difficult at all and I think that the finished product comes out really really nice um, and I think it's going to be really useful and it's a useful size and so that is the small sized Connie bag okay let's talk about the Geneva blouse so I am a big fan and have really been enjoying lately um, this cotton double gauze fabric. It is so nice and kind of breezy and lightweight for summer and I love the sort of crinkly look that it has. Um, and I thought it would work really well to make a more casual version of this fun Geneva blouse. Now this blouse has a v-neck but it's not an overly low v-neck which is nice and it has two different sleeve options. This one is called the lantern sleeve. It has this extra so it kind of goes out wide and then this extra piece is sewn to the bottom and it comes back narrow and that's the one that is shown in the picture on the front of the pattern is this lantern sleeve. Or it has a bell sleeve. So just kind of a wide bell sleeve that kind of hits right above the wrist on this version. Um, it went together very quickly. Nothing about this was difficult. This pattern comes with sizes zero through 20. And so it's really easy to take your measurements and customize how you want to make it fit for you. Um, and I think this is just going to be a really nice, versatile, very cool um, blouse for summer. One of the nice things about this pattern is that it has different pattern pieces for different bust 
cup sizes. And so it's very, very customizable um, to fit really almost anybody. And so I think that you might enjoy this. It has a standard shirt waist hem that goes curves down in the front and down in the back and goes up on the sides. Um, so this is the Geneva blouse. Makes up really quickly. And I think you'll like it. All right, we'll get her out of the way. And let's talk about quilts. So I've had this Stellar quilt pattern for a little while, wanting to make it. And um, Mallory found this really great fat quarter bundle of fabric that was Halloween fabric. And then when I was doing black and white for July, I thought, oh, this is gonna lend itself really well to this pattern. It's called the Stellar Quilt. And what it is, is kind of a deconstructed star block. So it's like a star block that's been all broken apart that then has um, the contrasting fabrics in between. And so it looks a little bit complicated, but it really wasn't. It went together really quickly and easily. So all it is, is rectangles and squares that you are continuing to sew the next square onto the corner, cutting off the excess and folding it up to give you all the triangles. And it, it, was, it was not difficult to make at all. And it went together really quick and the fat quarter bundle um, was plenty of fabric to make all of this and I have scraps left over, significantly sized scraps left over of all the fabrics in the fat quarter bundle because I didn't repeat it. I used two different fabrics from the bundle for each of the big blocks. So it came together quickly and I'm pretty happy with how it, it looks and it was really fun to make and the fabric is really, really cute. As a fun note, the backing is this really fun black and white fabric that I got at the Littleton store. And it kind of looks to me like moons, like the phases of the moon. And so I thought that that fit really, really well for a Halloween quilt. So I think that's gonna be really fun to have in my house or the house of someone I love. We'll see. All right, and then finally, I have this really fun quilt book called Witches Not night out from It's So Emma. And this is a sampler quilt. And so in my version of the sampler quilt, um, I bought a couple of quarter yard um, lengths of a couple different fabrics to fill in for what I already had. But almost all the fabrics in here were me using up Halloween fabrics like smaller pieces of Halloween fabrics that I had in my resource center. This was a really fun quilt to make. It is not a fast project because there's a lot of piecing, but because it's a sampler quilt and there are so many different blocks, different designs of blocks, it was not boring to make or laborious. It was really fun to go through and pick like one of the designs and then um, spend a couple days cutting out and sewing together the blocks for that particular design because there's lots of different pumpkin designs, pumpkin block designs, different sizes, different uh, piecing. And so it's a little bit of a skill builder quilt. While it was not quick, it was not difficult. I absolutely think that even a beginner quilter could do this and it would teach you lots of different techniques for different types of blocks that you're making. Um, when you get it, all your blocks done, there's really good directions to follow for piecing it all together so that you get your rows lined up correctly. And um, the other thing that I like about this is you, with all these different blocks, you could use these different blocks for all kinds of different things. You could use some of them to make pillows. There's a pattern in here for using some of them to make a table runner. Um, there's just lots of different ways that you can use these 
various blocks if you don't want to do it exactly like this, which I think is the beauty of a sampler quilt pattern. Lots and lots of options that you can do. Um, I chose to back this quilt with um, white minky and I quilted it on the long arm just using a wavy lines. So I think that that worked really well with the longer minky that I have on the back and with the Halloween design. So again, totally friendly for beginners and um, not very difficult, just not fast. So July is a good time to get started on making this cute sampler quilt. I will tell you one of the um, items that I used a lot that I know is carried in the stores um, with both of these quilts is diagonal seam tape. And it's that diagonal tape that you put on the bed of your sewing machine that has the markings every quarter inch so that when you are sewing squares, it's a huge time saver that you don't have to go through and draw a diagonal line on all of those squares for all of your quilt pieces because you can line it up on the diagonal seam tape that's on the bed of your machine and very, very accurately sew those triangles. And so it's a huge time saver. So look for that in your stores. I know that they have it. Um, thanks for being here with me this month, So Fun Friends. As always, I hope to see you in person and I hope you have been inspired to do a little bit of black and white interpretation in your sewing. Have a great rest of your summer. Thanks, bye.